Welcome to Art and Talk. Art and Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art, creativity, and passion. We produce diverse and quality interviews to watch and be inspired by, and we embrace all the arts. If you're new to us, we open the show with our guest artist, opening with a poem, a live song, or an art piece, whatever their creative field is in, to help set the stage and to help us get the feel and tone of the interview. Today we have a guest poet who is also dressed up to help animate her opening poem so we can get a, a feel into the character in the poem. And we'll find out what that's all about in just a moment. Please stay connected with us on social media on our YouTube channel, Art and Talk. Please subscribe, like, and share. We appreciate your support. And also stay connected with us on our Facebook page as well. Thank you so much for checking in with us today and watching Art and Talk. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk, and I'd like to welcome our guest poet for today, Anam Satar. Anam, welcome. Hi. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and I'm going to recite a poem. Um, it's a feminist poem, and it's a hyphen. It's called Taking It Slow, and it was published in the New English Review, and here we go. Here we are standing in my new boyfriend's messy apartment. He strokes the back of my hand as I swallow an emergency contraceptive tablet. Flinging the empty recyclable cardboard box into the wrong trash bin, Ryan tiss tiss. Babe, we should have made love for one more time before you popped that that's the poem. <laughs> um, it's connected to my attire currently. I'm doing the 1950s housewife look with mascara running down her eyes and lipstick smudged all over. And I've got like this little phone purse, you know, when she calls and nobody responds to her, nobody cares. Um, it's in the, both the poem and my attire is kind of ironic because I want to celebrate women through this because I feel like their voices have not been heard. Historically, you know, women were not as outspoken as they are now. And like they used to use masculine pen names to write and things like that. And now women are actually out there doing writing the way they should. So I feel like my pieces just connect with that whole feminist theme. I feel like women should be heard regardless of whether somebody is going to be pissed at what they write or not, whether they get positive reviews and negative reviews on it. So yeah. I love the creativity that you <laughs> put into it with the rollers and the makeup, the whole 1950s look. And so uh, you're, you're correlating it to uh, bringing your, your poem to life as, as you were saying, Anam, that um, you felt that during that particular decade of the 1950s, that, that women's voices weren't necessarily are as art articulated as they are now, and they were a little bit more suppressed. And you kind of want to bring um, a vocalization, so to speak, uh, for women today to to speak their mind and and to you know say what they what they want to say and and um, to have the confidence and and whatnot to to go forth with that. That's correct. Yeah. I feel, yeah, I feel like every aspect of myself, whether it's my clothing, my writing, people I interact with, all of that kind of like expresses myself. And since I'm female, you know, whatever I feel, if I'm standing up for myself, I'm standing up for women. So I think that's how the poems go about, um, almost as a coincidence. That's how it goes. Yeah. And um, tell us a little bit more about this, this poem and why did you open the show with it? Because that really does set the tone for the show. So what was your kind of like your thought process in, in selecting it and um? Um, I feel like um, taking it slow is about birth control and how, you know, men do not take birth control as much or in that intensity as women do. And women don't even have access to birth control really. So it's kind of like how something like birth control is viewed differently by a man uh, compared to you know a woman and like her voice is not really heard so I'm using that or using this poem to express one part of female identity which is basically that women should be in control of their sexuality their bodies their reproductive systems and like 
when I do that, it's like me trying to give power to women on one aspect of who they are. And in one way, I'm also, you know, empowering myself on one aspect of who I am. But then everything else kind of like comes together. So like the way I dress, if I'm dressing the way I want, that's kind of like how I'm empowering myself. If I write in a certain way, I'm empowering myself. You know, so all of those things kind of like come together, which is why I chose this poem, because this poem is like one out of many other poems that I use to like, you know, try to empower myself and empower other women as well. It kind of like comes full circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And I, I love how you elaborated on that. So would it be correct to say that uh, the keynote message um, is to is about empowerment and, and specifically for women through your poetry? Yes, and I feel well, because I'm female, so I'm looking at it through like, you know, a woman's perspective, but I feel like I want to have that universal edge to my poems. So like, um, women like it, I, I get feedback from women editors, I get feedback from, you know, girls that used to, you know, edit the poems with me in creative workshops at college. But then when men also find it funny, like the last line in that Ivan taking it slow was funny. So they're like, oh, hi, I find that funny. I'm gonna like publish it. So I feel like I really win when people that are not female who do, who do not identify themselves as female per se connect to it or find it fun or they enjoy it. So I feel like, okay, they're universal, they're worth more. Um, even children, like, yeah, even children, I mean, obviously they're girls, children, but like female children, but you know, kids just having like their connection to my poems as well in like a more childish, innocent way, it feels rewarding. So yes, I would want them to be, my poems to be feminist, but at the same time, I want them to have a universal appeal to it. So, yeah yeah so like a more universal appeal as you were saying so and i think that really says a lot about like having a very broad you know perspective on on your part that that's very inclusive of of everything so i think that was a great point that you brought up and that kind of helps us get a little bit more insight you know into you and you know like the way that you tick and and you know what kind of um, you know, what's important to you and, and you know, your perception of, of the world and your intention, you know, through your poetry and whatnot. Um, and the fun aspect that, that you bring to it is awesome. I love it. The curlers and the makeup and the dress and, and um, you know, the, the whole concept. So, so tell us about, like, how did this idea come about to actually kind of animate and bring to life your, your poetry through actually, you know, kind of personifying the character and, and, and dressing up in, in, you know, in that respect? Um, like poetry, like any other art form is about understanding human beings, like understanding the people you're around, the people that breathe the same oxygen that you do. So, um, <laughs> right. So it should be I dress because I want to connect with people more. Yes, like I'm writing things on paper so I can connect with people, but I also feel like the way I dress or talk or present myself should connect with people as well, which is why this whole dressing up thing started. Um, and also I feel like I, because I went to college for creative writing and in academic circles or even in non-academic circles, people tend to take poetry a little too seriously than necessary, almost to the point that they can like appear a little stuck up or arrogant or like know-it-alls like it's something that only we can do we can only write poetry you can only listen to it and like there's this barrier and I don't want my you know my poetry to be presented like that or myself as a poet to be presented like that I want to connect with people so I want to like break that barrier and I do that by dressing up saying you know like look at me I'm like this happy girl dressing up like my poems I love to write and you can write too and I think that's the type of message that I want to bring. And I feel like since I'm young and you have so many young kids going out to do creative writing and MFA programs and undergraduate programs that they need encouragement and they need someone their age who can connect with them for them to write. And I feel like by dressing up like this, by making it fun, I'm kind of like doing my job as a writer. So yeah, like bringing people together. Right. <laughs> encouragement. Yeah. Yeah, that is really beautiful. I, I love that whole whole thing is just is just great and so it basically one of the main words that i'm getting um is you animate you dress up not only for fun which is awesome but it's also to connect to kind of connect in and also to break barriers because you you want poetry to have like this like flow to it through you know with the audience and you know who's ever listening or, or viewing and i i think that's you know just a real 
really interesting, you know, perspective. It kind of takes it to a new level. It's not, it's it's not just the poet reading the poem and and everybody kind of sitting back and reflecting on it. It's just it's like adding this whole new like kind of like dynamic element to it. And I I think that you know really awesome that that you incorporate this. Right, nobody likes a know-it-all or like, I don't want to be presented as someone like, like almost like an elitist kind of thing. You don't want that, especially with art where it's like meant for everybody, you know, and like you get inspiration from art from the world around you. So then why, if, if art is something that you can be, if you get inspiration from art from the world around you, then you should not hide that art from that world because you take inspiration from that world. So it's only natural that you give back to that world. So, you know, art should be there for everybody. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's so beautiful. Um. Tell us a little bit more about inspiration. What inspired you in terms of your your poetry? Well, um, obviously the natural world is one thing. Um, birds, insects, and like I like to use biological terms in it to like make people scratch their heads so they feel like oh they'll Google up the word and they're like oh we learned something new today. I know what this word means in this poem. So, you know, that's fun. So I'm like, okay, everyone learns something new every day. And um, I think um, people and places around me, small things that people think are very insignificant, I would like, you know, see that and then store it up somewhere in my mind. And then later it'll all come together, like little events that happen throughout the day or things that I see with other people. And I'll bring it in, I'll bring my voice into it and combine it all together and create a message out of it. So that's how the poem comes out into being. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a collection of observations. Then you bring your voice to it, and then a message develops from the observations and, and kind of mixing your voice in the brew, so to speak, and then so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess like it's not as magical, but it's kind of like um, like for example, if I'm there and I see if you look at sunflowers the sunflower head it kind of like turns towards the sun so it's kind of like worshiping the sun because it needs the sun to like grow so i'll look at that i'll find that pretty and then maybe later you know some event will happen to me to other people or whatever i'll connect the two images together so i would be like okay you know um i've been so disappointed by you or some person it's kind of like how a sunflower would turn its head away from the sun, just so unnatural because it is the sun. So I was like, you know, so inspired and I love this person so much, but they've hurt me so much that I have to like distance myself from them, which is so unnatural for me, just like it's unnatural for a sunflower to turn its head away from the sun. It's like two images coming together. So like that, that's how my creative writing goes. Mm -hmm. So drawing a lot of inspiration from people and from nature and, and, and whatever is around you as well. Right, whatever I find interesting, and I'll just like store up in my head, and then I'll connect them with emotions that I feel, and I'll be like, okay, just like you know, the sunflower unnaturally turning away from the sun, me turning away from someone I really like feels so unnatural to me, but I need to do it. <laughs> and in terms of journaling and, and keeping those those notes, are are you good about um, you know actually remembering all these things like a week later, or do you jot things down right away, or, or how does that journaling and, and an idea generation play out for you? At college, a lot of my professors were like, oh, journal where you just put your little notes in. I don't like that. I find it cumbersome and very tiring to like write. I'm very lazy, I guess. It, it's in my head. I, I tend to remember things from like years back, months back. So it's easy for me. And then I'll just like, you know, bring it out from my memory and piece it together. I feel like whatever I write in a poem, about anything it's probably hit me so much emotionally it's had such an impact on me that I don't need to really write it down to memorize it it's already had such a huge impact in me that it kind of like lives within me so it's very natural for me to write about that and when you're writing when you're actually in your space and on writing do you like a certain type of environment um you know like um some poets like to have music on some like to have certain little um objects around them and they may find inspiring or maybe have a beautiful window that's overlooking a lake and trees or or something like that and then of course some and it, it's completely irrelevant um you know it's just the the process of writing and they're in that zone 
So what kind of brings you into the zone and what kind of environment, if any, is important to you when you're actually in that creative process and you're, you're writing your poetry? There's no, like, it's not like I have I, a particular office or somewhere I sit or anything. Like, I'm not fancy like that. Um, but what I do need is that emotion that I feel um, to write that poem. So like, if I want, if I want, but if the poem, if I wrote a sad poem, I need to constantly feel sad to complete the poem. If something happens in my life and I'm suddenly happy, that poem gets abandoned or is just like put aside for a while until, you know, I feel that emotion again and then I'll pick that poem up again. So for me, it's very emotional, you know, like emotion based. Um, so like if I have aggression, I need to continuously feel that aggression or I need to be fueled for it to complete that poem. So it, it doesn't matter where I am. I could be sitting on the plane. As long as I feel what I need to feel, I can complete it. Mm -hmm. So the, the emotional yeah. component is what's important for you, that you're, you're literally experiencing the emotion that you're writing about. And then it sounds like if you're not experiencing it, you're okay with it because you'll just come back to it another day. Is that correct? Pretty much, yes. And then the poems kept aside, which is why, you know, I keep revisiting the poems that I have in my notes where I'm like, okay, you know, after a while, I write them on the notes app in my phone. And I'm like, I keep going back to it based on how I feel. So if I feel very charged up with that emotion that was needed to write the poem, I'll go back to that poem and revisit it again. Mm -hmm. so it's very like organic. <laughs> it's healthy. It's not toxic. <laughs> Great. Yes. Um, and now let's touch upon, um, if, if you will, your actual creative process when, when you're into that, you know, space of, of writing. Um, what is that like for you? It's such a, because it's such an enigmatic, you know, process and it's so different for every artist. So share with us a little bit, if you would, please, the creative process for you. Um, like in a very academic way, I guess. Um, obviously, if you're going to, you feel things, but you need to have a particular way to present them. So since I'm presenting them through poems, I do spend a lot of my time reading a lot of poetry books, uh, but I don't focus on the poet themselves. I'll like pick up random books from a certain period. Like if I'm reading about you know, Greek poets, if I'm doing that. So then I'll pick up random Greek poets and just focus on the content. Maybe later I'll be like, oh, it's Ovid or someone that I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I don't tend to read a lot of modern poetry or like contemporary poets. I don't, I tend to go back in time because I feel like as you go back in time, not only is there more emphasis on the language because obviously different periods um, and how language has developed. So you learn that, but also I feel like, um, it's a very new perspective, even though it's like from ancient times that probably, you know, it's about things we don't talk about. So I feel like it might just click me in some way. So yes, I read a lot. I need that, obviously. Um, and I think uh, I tend to do very rough drafts and then keep, like I said, revisiting it over time and just focusing on the details, like even one word, a particular word in the sentence, I might change over time or I might like actually, you know, remove a a little period and like put an exclamation mark or a question mark or something, you know, so little things. Um, I focus on the details in my poems. And sometimes the poems come really short because I'm just focusing on that little space. Um, but if I give it more time, I can write longer poems with that. But I feel like I, I focus a lot on the detail and revision and material. I try to read a lot so that I can express ideas in a unique way. So someone can like be like, oh, I never thought about it in this way. How interesting, because I get that a lot. So yes, that's my very academic creative writing process. Mm -hmm. So to look at something that's already there, it could have been something from history from way back, it could be something now, and put it like a little, a different twist on it. Like it's the same thing, but you're kind of bringing it to like a different level of perception, so to speak, by, by, by expressing and looking at it in a completely different way. And it probably, you know, like in a more unconventional way as well. Right, because you can't reinvent the wheel. And I think everybody said that a lot of times. It's, it's the wheel. It's, nobody just thinks up about these things. Like there's no such thing as a genius coming in. People gain inspiration from the world around them. But it's those inspirations, what we see gets repeated over time, obviously. So what I try to do, if you read more, you can just bring an unconventional twist into it. At least try to make it a little more unique, even though it's like the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've asked other poets this, and um, I'd like to know 
what your thoughts are on this are. Do you think that part of the job of the poet and job in, the, in a loose um, context is to actually bring um, the reader, the, the listener, the viewer, what, whatever it might be, to actually see things, um, the world, um, themselves, others, whatever it might be, in a, in a new light, in, in a different way? Um, I wouldn't say yes in a new light because they're bringing their perspective into it. But for me as a poet, I feel in a more honest light or what you consider like in their honest light. Um, I think what poets are, poets are very brave people who bring out the truth in their work, in their writing as much as possible. And when they bring, when you're honest in your writing, then you're honest with yourself or you're honest with other people. And when you do that, your writing in itself becomes unique and stands out because you're bringing out your truth. It's not influenced by other people really. It's not camouflaged or hidden, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say, yeah, it's in a new light, but you get that new light by being, by knowing your voice and by being honest to yourself, only then can you present something in a new light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful, Anam, and I, I love the way that you express that. So it, it's that level of, of truth and, and authenticity within yourself that actually brings it to that space of viewing it in a new way. Yep. <laughs> yes. Um, talk to us a little bit about um, how you began your poetry and, and your, your poetry journey. Um, yeah, so uh, I've been writing as a kid, you know, little creative writing essays and maybe poems and stories here and there, but I never really knew what genre should I really focus on. I always wanted to be a writer for I'm on a book. So when I went to college, you know, to get a bachelor's in English, I was like in a creative writing class and I realized, okay, um, I took an advanced poetry class. I'm like, okay, so poetry is what I need to do. This is the best genre for me because there are no real rules in it. You can write small poems, short poems, long poems, you can twist it, turn it, you can create your own form. You have all these poets, you know, combining and mingling forms and bringing out their own forms out. So I think that genre poetry just works for me because I'm a person that's I'm very I'm a free spirit and I like to do things my way it shows very openly so I feel like poetry just works for me there is structure there is rules I am grounded as a person but at the same time there's freedom and I like that so yes that's how it started um then I did a couple of like radio shows, interviews, I read letters in libraries and cafes, and it just went on like one step to another. And now I feel like, okay, um, I should go and pursue an MFA degree in creative writing. Um, and, you know, maybe be a professor and teach undergraduate students creative writing. Um, I feel like poetry helped me see who I am. Um, and I am very thankful for that. I would want to like teach that art so that other people can also express themselves and realize who they are. Mm -hmm. So yes, <laughs> my and, service to the world. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, so your, your poetry helped you to, as you said, see yourself. Can you um, tell us through the, all the years of your writing, what have you found out about yourself? Because this is now tying back to, um, you know, connecting poetry with your voice and then also you know, um, kind of giving voice to others to say, hey, develop your, your own voice and, and express it in, in your own way. And it's, and it's okay and it's empowering. So for you specifically, Anam, what, what has it brought um, into your awareness and in, in, into you that like, oh, wow, this, this is really kind of like, like who I am through your writing. What has it shown you? Um, yeah, so like when I first started writing, it was my, I had a strong voice. It was funny. They had those little punchlines, but um, I, I guess I wouldn't say scared, but it was very like mellowed down. I would always like conceal my voice through symbols like birds. Um, it would be like if someone I did not, if there was something or someone or some aspect or something I saw that I didn't like, I would like turn that into a character that would be like a hunter. And like the good person would be the bird and like the hunter would shoot the bird down. So that's how I would like express my anger or my sadness or whatever I was feeling through characters, very fairy tale folklore characters. And I feel like, um, you know, my voice wasn't as strong enough as it is now over time. And as, as I've continued writing, I've become more bold with my writing. I've become more direct. 
you know, and like at first I used to be limited to like structures. I used to do like sonnets and sestinas and I used to be very particular and do couplets. And now I'm gone to like, you know, I've worked on three verse. I do three verse now. So I feel like I've actually opened up. I'm like, you know, pulling up all over the page. I'm like expressing myself everywhere. So I've seen that pattern in me and how like I've progressed. Um, would I continue writing like this forever? Maybe not. Maybe I'll go back to traditional forms again. But I do feel like that voice that has been sharpened and like, you know, it's been molded, it's pretty strong. It will stay. So I'm very happy about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that is so beautiful that poetry, you know, really presented all this to you and, and, and gave all this to you. And, I, and you express that very well. So it's kind of like you kind of concealed yourself into these, as you said, the characters or the symbols. It's almost like you didn't take ownership, but through your writing, you were um, brave enough and, you know, courageous enough to then kind of let yourself evolve to the point where it's like your own voice and, and expressing, you know, yourself and in, in your truth and, and in your light. And that, that's really beautiful. And then that's part of, you know, your message that you send out to everyone as well. Right. And it wasn't like a solo journey. I feel like I have to thank all the people that I met who are also involved in poetry, like yourself or like, you know, other people that I've met, like people that have interviewed me or invited me over or people that have sent their poems to me for me to edit or like, you know, just networking with people. And when you hear all these different voices that are different from like the academic circle, even even in the academic circle, you kind of realize that we're all like on the same boat, we're all on the same page trying to like express myself. So when you empower other people, you're kind of like empowering yourself. You're like, oh, they can be themselves. I can be myself too. Like we're all a team. So yeah, mm -hmm. it was, I needed the people around me to help me be where I am. So yeah, it wasn't a solo train. It was long. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so I, that's great, and it's so like a connecting, and the poetry is connecting, and and you like to connect um, with others, and then you connect through, you know, animating your your poetry as well, and um, also with your your sense of openness, and also really being, I think, guided, you know, by the the free spirit, you know, that you are, and um, but but also embracing, you know, like you said, it, it's not like you know. It's not like flying somewhere and never landing because like, as you were saying, you know, you embrace, you know, some of the, the academic aspects of, of poetry and you've been in that environment, but you don't let one way really, you know, take over. You, you kind of like are on like the, the middle path, so to speak, but bringing all those worlds together. And I, I think that that's, you know, you know, pretty awesome and really, you know, really fascinating that you embrace all that. Yeah, which is why you have people like what what do they call them Instagram poets and social media and things because when you look at any pers average person out there like any non academic or anyone that doesn't really do poetry they're like oh you know the first thing they'll say to you is that oh I can't write poetry or oh I can't understand poetry so when I try to write or I like to dress up I'm just just trying to tell people that you know you can do it too and it's like very it's almost like a therapy session that doesn't cost much and it's fun. So yes, <laughs> that's one of the reasons I'm kind of like bringing both worlds together, the academic and the non-academic world so that everyone's doing it, mm -hmm. which it should be. That's what art should be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And tell us, and I'm like, have there been other situations like today we have, you know, this 1950s housewife kind of thing going on, but have you dressed up before and brought to life um, other poems as well? Um, yeah, like uh, one of my earliest poems were about swans and it was about a, a female swan that could not mate with her male swan, her main counterpower. So like she ended up throwing him off her back, the swans mate on each other's backs, so she threw him off and like, you know, and then he goes off to another swan and she just like looks at them and she hides behind the reeds and rushes and she's like plotting against them. So see, it's kind of like my voice, but it's like behind symbols and things. Um, so I dressed up like a swan lady. I had this headdress that was basically a styrofoam swan on my head and a silver gown with white gloves. So I tend to do that. <laughs> I go all out. Um, I dressed up like a sunflower once with a bee in my head and like a sequin sunflower dress. I've done a Cleopatra dress. 
Um, I've done a peacock dress where like peacock feathers were like, you know, exploding out of my eyes, actual peacock feathers. And I had a peacock on my head. I like hats. I really do. They're called fascinators. They're fun. Um, and yeah, it's, it's basically the poem represented through my attire and people look at me. <laughs> and it's fun to see their reactions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. I love that you bring that element um, into your poetry and, and, you know, really kick it up in, in that respect. Um, Anam, what have we not touched upon about your poetry and your poetic journey that you'd like to share? I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> I think we've covered everything, but if there's anything you want to ask or you feel is important to ask, you should, you should ask. Um, well, um, before we wrap things up, um, in terms of your writing, um, how um, much writing are you doing currently? And do you have any like current projects that are going on? What, what's kind of like in the mix uh, currently for you? Um, I am writing. I mean, I, I don't like really put it as a goal that I need to like, you know, pick out six poems today <laughs> at like something like that, or I like need to finish a book or I need to have three to five books published. No, but um, I do have a collection of poems that I've been working on since my undergrad thesis. So like some of them are in that and then some of them are new poems. So I'm hoping that when I do do the MFA program graduate from there, I'll combine all those poems together and present them as a book. So I'm not in a hurry to really, you know, do that. Um, currently, I'm teaching um, kindergarten, kindergartners right now because um, I want to be a professor and I feel like the best way to learn about language is to work with all age levels and all age groups. It's a very interesting way of looking at it because I don't know. I feel like people can pick up the English language regardless of where they come from, their backgrounds and their nationalities, nationalities and things. But what really makes language so unique is when you teach it to a younger child because that's when phonics comes in and that's where you know you break up words and you see where they're coming from and how they're picking up different words and different alphabets and that's how I feel like I'm kind of like learning the basics of how language is formed by experiment experimenting by working on it with kids and I feel like that's how I can like you know go from them and then maybe teach high school level then you know teach college level and see that built up that's what I want to do um so yeah and I write here and there and publish things and I get really happy and then, you know, radio shows and interviews. So that's fun. Gives me an excuse to, you know, dress up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to, you know, dress up like this and, and give us all this insight into your, your, your poetry and your message and your whole like very organic process and um, all the things that you, you shared with us. Um, we are going to need to wrap up the show and we would like to leave you with any closing comments that uh, you'd like to offer and then if you could let us know how we can stay in touch with you. Um, closing comments, I guess with the whole, I guess I would tell people to write unapologetically, just write the way you want to write, regardless of whether someone might like it or might not like it. I feel like when you write something that irritate someone or a group of people that means that peace actually stands out as worth something so all those right things that I mean I'm not saying irritate everybody but like write something that makes people feel uncomfortable you know or or even inspires people in a positive way both ways as long as you get an emotion out of people your writing's worth something so I would give that to people you know as, a, as advice um, if you guys need to connect with me obviously I'm on Facebook and um it sounds weird when I say it, but if you Google my name, you can kind of like read my poems and things like that. So I'm usually available. I'm right there. So yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anam, thank you so much for being our gotcha. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you so much for being our guest poet and um, everything that you shared and, and dressing up and, you know, animating your, your poetry and um, all the different aspects that are important to you and your creative process. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And for understanding. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Anam. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching Art and Talk. Uh, please do stay connected with us on social media, on our Facebook page, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can bring you diverse and quality interviews. If there's anything specific that um, we haven't um, had as an artist, uh, let us know, comment about it, and we'll see what we can do to 
um, bring you that, or if there's something you want to see more of a you know particular uh, field of, of art, you know, let us know about that as well. And thank you for the time that you take to watch Art and Talk. Anam, thank you again for being our guest poet. This was wonderful and very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks again, everyone. And we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.